let's solve this differential equation. y double prime minus 4y equals e to the power of negative 2x. Now to start off, we see that we have a function on the right hand side, right? So it's not homogeneous. So we're going to have to deal with a yh and a yp, y particular. But let's start with the homogeneous part where we're going to simply ignore what's on the right hand side. So y double prime minus 4y equals a 0. Find the characteristic equation for it, r squared minus 4. Make sure you don't accidentally put an r here just because there's a y there. So r squared minus 4 equals 0. That's going to give me r squared equals 4. And my two roots are two real numbers, plus and minus 2. From this, I can find my components for the solution. The first two, y1 and y2. Uh, r1 equals 2 will give me e to the 2x. And r2 minus 2 will give me y2 equals e to the power of negative 2x. Now let's go ahead and construct our homogeneous solution right here. c1 times y1 plus c2 times y2. Now unfortunately we're not done because we have a function on the right hand side as well. So we are going to have to go ahead and find our yp, the particular solution. So for this I'm going to use the an annihilator method, method and I'm going to take my function y double prime minus 4y and I'm going to write it with the operators. The, I'm going to write it in operator form. So uh, d squared for the y double prime minus 4i for the y and the y comes in the end. So if we would multiply this in, this would come here. The d squared is telling me that I'm going to need a second derivative of the y. And when this comes here, the i, the identity, just tells me that just replace i with y. And that's it. It stays as it is. So these replace this, this part, right? But for this part, we know the two roots so for these two roots, we can write, break this up and write it this way, d plus 2, d minus 2, right, times y. We can't forget the y. Okay, now that I have this one, I'm going to rewrite my equation in operator form with what we found here, left-hand side and right-hand side. Now, the reason I picked the annihilator method is because I know that e to the ax we'll have an annihilator of the form d minus a. So what I have here, e to the negative 2x, will have an annihilator of d minus minus 2, right? Because we have a minus here, we have a minus, so it's going to be a plus. d plus 2. That's going to be my annihilator. So I'm going to take it, d plus 2, and I'm going to multiply by my equation. Left hand side, right here, multiplied by my annihilator, left hand side, multiplied by the annihilator. So the only reason why we call this guy an annihilator is that because when we multiply it to this, it'll destroy it, it'll become zero. So on the left hand side, we have two of these, so d plus 2 squared and d minus 2 times y. Now, I'm going to rename my y with a little hat on it, like, let's call it y temporary. And we'll see it in a minute why. Now, from this, just like we had here, we had two roots, and then we wrote up the solution from it. We're going to do the exact same thing. We have three roots now, and we're going to write up the solution from it. Same thing. We have uh, negative 2, negative 2, and positive 2 as our roots, right? So that's going to give me c1 e to the 2x, c2 e to the negative 2x, and x e negative 2x. We have this here because we have this root is repeating, so we're going to have to put an x in front of it. Okay, 
Now, if we take a look at it, we have three roots, so three par partial solutions in it, right? Now, at this step, we call this temporary because there's too much stuff here. These two terms are repeating from here, so we need to cross them out. We don't want those. All we need what is different, what is fresh. And this will be my YP, the particular solution, right? But we have the C3 and we can find what it is. So we're not going to call it YP yet. We're going to find C3 first and then we're going to call it YP. Now to do that, to find C3, we're going to have to go back and plug it back in, a, in our original equation, right? But first, before we can do that, we're going to have to take a derivative of it and a second derivative derivative of it and here it is hopefully you guys can see y prime y double prime and now let's go ahead and plug them back here in our main equation and here it is all i did i took what we found here y double prime plugged it in minus four times y which is right here, equals the right hand side like we had it in the original equation. Now, put terms together, simplify, do as much work as you can, bring it down to simpler form, minus 4 C3 e to the negative 2x equals e to the negative 2x. Now we have e to the negative 2x both sides, get rid of it. So, negative 4 C3 equals 1, and there is our C3 negative one fourth so now we can come here and this y temporary finally we can call it yp with negative one fourth right here negative uh, yp equals negative one fourth x e minus two x i just simply went here plugged it in and there it is so now all that is left is to find our final solution, which is y. y equals yh plus yp. Now all we're going to do, go ahead and plug them in. Make sure you don't forget your constant. So c1 times y1 e to the 2x plus c2 times y2. y2 is e to the negative 2x minus 1 fourth x e the minus 2x. This is my yp from right there. And that will be it.